Cryptocurrency Market Update. I'm your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Hopefully you guys are doing fantastic today, wherever you happen to be tuning in from and wherever you happen to be watching us on the internets here, whether that's uh, DLive, Twitch, or the YouTube. So, uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Let me know how you guys are doing this morning, what you guys have your eye on. Uh, it's, uh, it's, again, just another, it's just another day of of, of kind of poor performance in the market. We'll see that again. Uh, a couple signs, you know, a couple, a couple, uh, a couple coins outperforming today. Of course, we've got Hex, we've got Dogecoin, which is making a, a surge. We've got DFI up a little bit. Uh, the one inch coin, which interestingly enough, somebody asked about the, yesterday on the stream, uh, moving up a little bit, Cake, Luna, uh, you know, XEC. Uh, so pretty much, you know, coins that have been relatively popular, I would say. Um, well, you know, Hex always, Hex always kind of moves like sideways, but you know, Cake, Luna, DFI, Dogecoin, those have all been quite hot this year but again mixed bag because other hot coins as well uh you know cro uh let's see here mana um a sand engine coin polka dot you know those are down today as well so uh it does seem like the bleeding is e easing up a little bit there might be actually be some short-term uh, uh longs here on the table uh but we'll take a look at that when we get into the markets um overall today uh what are things uh what are things that are a little bit interesting today that i've had my eye on uh just a second Ooh, got the bubbles working nicely. Okay. Uh, I guess, I don't know, just in silly news, uh, I guess in silly news, um, Gwyneth Paltrow, yes, Academy Award winning Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, she participated in a $200 million financing project for TerraWolf, which is a uh, zero carbon emission crypto mining uh, company. So uh, interesting. Uh, I don't really have any jokes for that. You know what I mean? I, I don't really have any jokes for that, but I'm sure they're out there. Let me guys know. Let me let, just let, let me see that. Uh, for the basketball fans out there, the Golden State Warriors did just sign to a multi-year deal sponsorship rights deal with FTX. So it uh, looks like they are kind of looking at uh, crypto.com with all their advertisements on UFC and literally everywhere. Crypto.com is crushing it with advertisements right now. Uh, FTX wants to hop up there as well. And uh, Sam Bankman-Fried is not going to take a back seat um, to FTX. Or excuse me, FTX is not going to take a back seat to Sam Bank. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sam Bankman-Fried is not going to take a back seat to Crypto.com. There we go. Got it right. Um, this is funny though. So if you guys will recall, if you guys have been in this space for a while, back in August of 2016, there was a pretty substantial hack on the Bitfinex platform. Uh, over, let's see here. It was how many were stolen? Um, let's see here. One hundred and twenty thousand Bitcoin. Yeah, approximately one hundred and twenty thousand Bitcoin back in August twenty sixteen was hacked from the Bitfinex exchange. Hacked, and <laughs> they just announced Bitfinex just announced that in collaboration with Poloniex, they were able to recover about six and a half Bitcoin. Six and a half Bitcoin out of 120,000, all right, uh, were recovered. And they're making this huge announcement like this is a thing. Um, <laughs> so um, it seems like Binance is getting itself out of a little bit of hot water. They are going to be signing an agreement with Dubai uh, so that they can basically not have issues with, with kind of the regulatory problems they got into. Uh, let's see here. That's really it, except for uh, Polygon Matic is going to be... Um, uh, rolling out a test net of uh, EI Ethereum's new improvement protocol, uh, which is going to allow them to burn their native Matic token. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how the price responds. That again, buy the new, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? Uh, Twitch, Twitch announced that they are going to be setting up an NFT marketplace based on Solana. It's going to be called Fractal. So uh, definitely take a look at that. That's going to be pretty cool. And Circle just announced that they are also going to be adding, or excuse me, Circle is now available, or USDC is now available on the Avalanche platform. So uh, the DeFi protocols and, and projects on Avalanche can now take advantage of the USDC liquidity pool. Kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's really about it. That's really all we got going on today. Um, so always good news in the cryptocurrency markets. It's always a good time to be a developer. It's always a good time to be getting into the space. Uh, but with that being said, uh, let's hop over into the live scene and, and take a look at everything. Hopefully everything's working appropriately. Yeah, no, nothing's working appropriately. There we go. All right. Got the charts up and crypto bubbles. Uh, let's see here. Paltrow also got sued because one of her candles exploded and burned down someone's house. All natural, man. She's got, 
<laughs> the all natural candles. Only the good ones, only the good ones burn down your house when you use them, right? Everybody knows that. All right, let's start off as we always do. Bitcoin, we've got the weekly chart pulled up, guys. We are moving uh, surely but slowly down for that baseline significant test. I want you guys to pay attention. I've marked out a couple uh, previous areas on the weekly chart where we did turn around and we did continue on with the bullish up thrust and we did get a higher high. Uh, is that still in the cards for Bitcoin? It's going to depend on volume. It's going to depend on how price interacts with the baseline uh, in my estimation. So the previous time that we spent a lot of time down here, um, one of the one of the easiest signs that you guys can kind of spot for on longer time frames to see accumulation. You don't really, you know, there's lots of advanced tools. You can look at cumulative volume. You can look at cumulative volume delta. You can look at whale stats. You can look at accumulation. Um, but in general, one of the easiest ways to determine like is the market likely going to turn around from here or more like more specifically, right? That's a little bit too abstract. Uh, more specifically, are we seeing absorption at this price level, right? Which means whatever the dominant force in the market is whether it be sellers right so let's look at let's look at this area from here to here okay this is two weeks where sellers are clearly in control uh they push the market down uh fit almost 50 percent from peak to low and so uh, very just very obviously sellers are in control here and you know obviously you guys were trading this or were around or maybe you weren't uh but whenever you see something like this it be, it's very scary especially if you're holding bitcoin long term and you've just seen your investment portfolio just get chopped in half and you're usually asking yourself like should i sell well again we, we talked about this a lot before the problem with selling uh following negative price action or negative news is that you almost never actually end up buying back in on a low and almost almost inevitably end up buying back in higher than when you actually exited the market. There's a lot of psychological reasons for this. There's just a lot of practical reasons for this. But for that for that matter, you never want to panic sell like ever. That is just the number one rule of trading. Um, if you're trapped in an investment, then you're trapped in an investment, right? And you move on. This is kind of the nice thing about being a trader as well, uh, is that we don't have our entire pool of capital locked up and losing opportunity costs, because of course there is opportunity loss. Um, but when you're a more active and frequent trader, you can move your capital around and have more access to it frequently and hold it in USDT or hold it in USDC or DAI or PAX or USD uh, as you as you need and as you see fit. Okay, um, so... However, following that, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight weeks, two months of lots of low, uh, uh, low overall low volatility, low momentum, highly wicky price action, right? And we can see that there's a lot of wicks extending to the downside. We even have this really beautiful uh, weekly hammer candle, right? Just this beautiful weekly hammer candle. Um, and when you see lots of wicks down to a key level of support uh, and very low candle bodies, it means that overall price is getting absorbed. Whatever the dominant market force was leading up to that level of support or resistance, uh, it, it is acting as a level of support and resistance, right? Uh, the wicks are very determinative of this. So all you really need to do, it's not all you really need to do, but one of the best signs that you can utilize on these higher time frames or on any time frame is watching for absorption, right? Watching for sell orders to get absorbed, watching for sellers to be unable to push price below the lows, and specifically looking for a lot of wicks and small candle bodies. Dojis are great. Uh, you know, reversal candles are great, whether they be shoot, you know, um, uh, morning star candles, which is a hammer candle flipped upside down at the top, or in the case of support, a hammer candle. So these are really important to look out for uh, and very helpful. Um, so as you can see, there was a lot of absorption in this price level. Uh, at the again at a key level of support the weekly baseline uh, and what does price do following this it it pushes up right it pushes up uh, we close above the range very definitively with a good candle body right here we can see these candle bodies are outsized and not the norm based on what we had seen no dojis no small candle bodies good volume and even if you had waited for the confirmation on this weekly candle you would have cut a nice you would have cut a nice upswing in fact you'd still be in profit you would still be in profit right now not a lot of profit but you'd still be in profit you'd still be up Get rid of magnum mode here, sorry. You'd still be up 16%, right? Nothing, nothing to sneeze at. Nothing, not not what you want following, you know, what, like four months of 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 holding on, but still not bad. Not bad to see. Um Okay. Uh moving on from that. Um and again, we can we can see uh, very similar things occurring at these two areas of the market, right? Where the market actually reversed. We can see that up here and we can see that to a lesser degree, but still the exact same thing here, right? Um, lots of wicks, 
Lots of candle bodies in the same vicinity of the area. Price just lingering around. Lots of wicks to the upside. Uh, buyers unable to push price above that level of resistance that we stopped at, right? You can consider the resistance here, but then it was more astonishing here. And we're just unable to really push past that on a significant basis. No weekly closes above that level. Lots of wicks. And what does price do? Price reverses relatively quickly. Uh, remember, price is, always tends to shoot down far faster than it shoots up, particularly in cryptocurrency. And this is because of kind of the panic selling and hurting mentality of trends. So... Uh, uptrends uh, are harder to build. It's harder to get somebody. It's harder to get somebody to put their money into something, right? And this is true in the markets. This is just true in life in general. It's always harder to put in your, in your own personal capital into something than and it's very easy to pull it back out. It's very easy to pull it back out because it's very easy um, to get scared, to panic and and say, nope, I'm done just takes the click of a button, right? Whereas kind of working yourself up to do, click the buy button is much harder, right? Uh, and this is one of the reasons why lots of uh, amateur traders or novice traders are going to make so many mistakes, not really because they're entering in a poor area, but because they're exiting uh, in a poor area, not based on strategy, not based on price levels, not based on indicators, not based on analysis, um, but on fear, on panic and reaction to the market. You never want to react to the market. You want to I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. It's just the best way I know how to do it, right? There's lots of uh, lots of situations in which, man, if I could only just react to these particular situations in the market and know exactly what to do, like I would just absolutely nail it and make so much more money. Um, but the reality is, is that that almost never works for anybody. Um, you know, you'll get lucky once, once or twice or a few times, um, but you can't build a habit. You can't build a career out of being lucky. You have, you have to be skilled. Um, and the only really good way to be skilled in this industry and in trading or investing in general is to have an objective strategy and execute that over and over and over again. Because eventually, if you don't have something like that, your luck will run out. Um, so we can see that over here as well. Lots of heavy wicks to the upside, lots of price absorption. And what does price do? Price turns around. So do we see any kind of price action like that right now? Well, we might. This weekly candle is very fresh. Uh, this weekly candle could end up closing upwards back up here in the $49,000 level area. Uh, and we could have these, these big wicks to the downside. So I'd say a few more weeks of this, maybe a month of this. Uh, and if we see price continue to linger above the weekly baseline, if we see a lot of wicks to the downside, I could see the market reversing, turning around, uh, and I'd likely be a buyer at that point in time. Uh, at this point in time, again, I think the most intelligent thing to do is stay flat or be hedged and wait for those signs of reversals because right now uh, price could just continue to carve down and carve through this like butter because we have been on a pretty ferocious downtrend. Uh, and you never want to call the bottom in a, in a, in a bear market, excuse me, you never want to call the bottom in a bear market and the top of the bull market. And that's not, I don't really think we're in a bear market yet. There's already been a lot of pain. Um, but uh, again, we're not, we're not, we haven't broken down past these key weekly levels. You know, this is really where the, the bear market began when we really broke below the weekly baseline over here back in 2018. And although we did resurge a few times, I mean, that was the, that was the clear sign of the apocalypse, right? Um, <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of those levels here real quick. Uh, we'll go over to the daily and see what we have firing on the daily. Okay. All right, uh, we do have a, a secondary continuation short signal coming in today from Minx. Uh, we are not yet oversold. We've got quite a bit of ways to go until we're really deep in that uh, that trench down area. Watertar explosion is confirming this trade as well, and we do have weak confirmation, which is fine, uh, from our volume indicator. So price is lower, but volume is lower, and falling volume it tends to be quite bearish. So right now you can also see, this is a little bit better on the meso time frame charts, but we're really forming this descending channel right here. Um, some people consider descending channels bullish, and again, the chart patterns are a little iffy in any ways to begin with, honestly. But uh, you guys can see that we do have diagonal resistance. Let's just kind of chart that out so you guys can see that. So we do have some diagonal resistance going on here. And we do have some, again, diagonal support going on here. So uh, can we trade in this channel for a few days? Absolutely. I'd be watching for those breaks down if you wanted that momentum entry signal. Or again, for that break to the upside, if you wanted to take the reversal trade back up to the baseline, only about a 7 8% trade, but still possibly on the table. I would actually set your sights a little low on that. Uh, whenever we are, uh, you know, I tend to be a little bit more aggressive with, uh, you know, when I do short things down to the baseline. So let's say I had taken a short up here. Uh, I tend to be a more aggressive and expect price to hit the baseline. Uh, but when I am taking reversal trades to the upside, uh, that means that price is already below the baseline. Uh, and everybody else is typically kind of looking at a very similar pattern and moving average as well. And so you want to kind of set your take profits a little bit lower than you think they would. Then, of course, there's also individuals who are seeing that and doing the exact same thing as you. So what do you do? So do you set your take profits a little bit below them? And you got the group that are already doing that. So you take, so you take, you just do the best you can, guys. You just do the best you can. Okay. Um, all right. <sighs> Moving on from that. Uh, 
Uh, so we do have all the trending indicators firing for a continuation short. Yet again, on today's candle, we've actually stacked up quite a few. Here was the first continuation short, putting us in good profits. Uh, second continuation short we did take on Friday. Now in the green on that, and we are getting the second one there. What would be a good target for this? Let's just spin up Quadrigo and take a look. We've got to flip this to the downside. And we again have something in the range of 43,586. Uh, 40,334 and 37,081. And again, notice how that is lining up really nicely uh, with those key levels of support. All right. So uh, don't short the bottom, but again, targeting those key levels of support that we talked about earlier uh, and waiting to see what price does there before establishing or building up a larger position, I think is always the smartest thing to do. Okay. Um, Uh, we'll look at Ethereum as well. Ethereum on the weekly. Here we go over to Bitstamp. Let's check out the weekly. Again, uh, Ethereum is kind of interesting here. Ethereum is kind of a good bull weather for the for the recent market, uh, as opposed to Bitcoin, honestly, uh, this last year. Um, so anyways, uh, I just want to build the bullish case. This is what I see a lot of people kind of looking at. And we do have this this, this ascending trend line, right? Uh, that it does seem like uh, Ethereum is going to be breaking right now. So if you were kind of trading based off of this break of diagonal uh, support, you would want to wait for this weekly candle to close. And then you want to be taking that short, a 30% short down to the weekly baseline. Uh, typically, a good way to set this is to be setting your stop loss above uh, the high. Um, however, I don't think you're going to get a very profitable position size doing that. So most likely come a little closer somewhere up here. Uh, the weekly minx has turned over. We're not in negative territory yet, uh, but we are definitely out of longs. We were actually uh, signaled to get out of the weekly long on this weekly candle right here. So here's the uh, here's the continuation long right here, and then here's the exit signal just for taking these kind of big weekly swing trades. That was 11% profit on the weekly, and it's worked out pretty well so far. Uh, it allows you to catch these big trends. We've had many weekly trends here. So um, again, not really something that I'm looking for, but again, downside target, what would I be looking at? I'd be looking right here at the weekly baseline, but honestly, more importantly, a couple key levels of support is going to be this uh, this buy-in level that we established in the uh, $2,800 range. And then, of course, here's that same, here's that weekly wicking behavior uh, to the downside that we talked about. Lots of wicks, small candle bodies following a large dump, very indicative of accumulation and absorption of sell side pressure. And that occurred down in the upper one th excuse me, 1900s to 2000s. So uh, those are the two levels of downside support I see coming in. And again, we just need to wait and see what price does in those areas and react to the market. Uh, other than that, we, we are not in a bear market yet. The weekly chart is not yet completely bearish for Ethereum. We've got a 30% retrace coming in. So again, definitely a lot of trades to take on the table. The daily chart has switched bearish. We've got a nice breakdown of our previous level of support. Uh, everything firing short. We got the initial short signal back here on the 4th of December and a continuation short again on Friday. We took that trade as well. Two days of drawdown and then now back in the green. Uh, and again, everything's still quite bearish here on the daily. All right. Uh, switching over, uh, now let's go through, uh, let's go through. So I did want to make this, I made this announcement earlier today on, um, in discord, excuse me. Uh, but we do now have the super duper Dima strategy, uh, active on Bybit. Uh, we have the premium members will notice that there are six new signal channels. Um, and we've divided the signal channels into, uh, what each, each asset. So Bitcoin and Ethereum each have a long only channel and a short only channel, um, in the long only channel. It's not, it's, so I don't want to very, I want to clarify this. It's not as if, uh, they're titled, uh, BTC buy signals and BTC sell signals. They're two different discord channels. And it's not as if, uh, you'll get the buy signal in the buy channel, and then you'll have to watch the sell channel sell signals channel for the sell signal for that buy or that's not how it works uh it's just that the buy signals channel is going to be long only trades so each signal will have a take profit a stop loss recommended risk um why the signal was called what the strategy was a unique id for the trade so you can search for it or find it um so uh dividing the dividing the channels in such a fashion uh, i think makes it easier for the members to find the trades that they're looking for and looking for the setups that they're looking for um, it allows them to trade based on their own ta as well uh, looking for signals to supplement their own ta or intuition uh, or just trading style or strategy uh, and then of course all these trades are being tracked uh, in our google sheets um, application so you guys can uh, premium members will have access via their google drive access uh, they just go to the premium member on board excuse me the premium <laughs> Uh, the first channel, which is uh, introductory and beginner material. And then the second folder, uh, it's all clearly labeled for premium signal tracking and results. And then there's the automated strategies folder in that folder as well. 
uh, where you guys can access all this. So right now there are multiple sheets um, and multiple strategies. And just as we continue to add on, uh, as we implement our automated systems uh, and get more of this going on, it'll be cool to watch. So uh, we're going to be looking at the signals that are being called for the Bybit market right now. We're going to be focusing on Bybit and FTX. Those I think are going to be, you know, Bybit's my favorite trading platform, but FTX is, is also a great, great trading platform. Uh, and I just think that's the way to go um, with their just absolute market dominance, the features that they've added, uh, you know, how seamless trading is on that those platforms and how just how much they support and how much they offer. So a lot of money to be made, guys. So anyways, we're going to be going through, this is going to be on the 45 minute time frame. So we are looking for kind of active trades here, uh, looking for trending signals here on the 45 minute chart on the Bybit platform. So uh, not, we're flat on BTC USD here. Uh, we did have a really good good trade here, but the last trade the strategy actually took was the long trade right here. Uh, here's the entry at this part of the market and then the exit pretty much right at the top, which is pretty cool. Uh, but again, nothing coming on here insofar as this strategy uh, looking at Ethereum again, we are in it. We, we blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Ethereum already nailed the short. Uh, this the signal was already posted. Here was the short signal right here. Actually, the three hour chart because we switched over to the forty five minute. But um, here's the uh, here's the last Ethereum short signal entry right here, and then exit on this candle. And again, just so you guys know, there are two ways to do this. Um, one can either. Um, uh, so the way that I'm going to be showcasing these and the way that the signal system works is that all profits going to be taken at the first TP, right? Uh, this is incre this increases accuracy. It's good for the newer traders. It's good for people looking to supplement their signals. Uh, there's less guesswork. However, in the strategy tester, which I am about to publish, uh, you can set the option of 50-50. And what this will do is instead of taking all your profit at TP1, what you will actually do is you will take 50% off of TP1, your stop loss gets moved to break even, and then you're gonna be waiting for the sell signal, right? And the sell signal uh, in the strategy tester can be any one of these exit signals right here. Uh, and I will code more based on request, but uh, just keep in mind that it's kind of hard to do this. So uh, I will be up, this is some, this is, I mean, this is my baby, my huge strategy tester. So uh, I will be updating this as, as time goes on. Uh, but right now, right, we just see that the basic strategy is just the super trend sell signal, which is price crossing and closing above the the super trend line uh, once we've already established a trade on one side of it. So, um, and, you know, again, one can do that with the signals that are coming into Discord of their own accord as it is right now. It's just, all that matters is your execution and your implementation of the trade. Uh, so flat on Ethereum, but again, you can consider this still in bearish territory and an active, uh, an active short could still be in. Um, we're going to switch over to, the, uh, excuse me. So finishing out the USD markets, uh, EOS USD had a successful trade here, getting in on the open of this candle, really the close of this, catching its first take profit here. Again, that is still active. So a long could still be held on that. Uh, XRP USD uh, actually has not exited the long yet. We talked about this yesterday uh, on the three hour as well. It did enter the long uh, actually earlier this morning. So excuse me, this is wrong. I was talking about the three hour yesterday. So this is the 45 minute, excuse me. Uh, long was entered here still in that trade. All right, switching right over to the USDT markets. Ooh, Solana took a bad long right here, still in the trade. All right, Cardano is flat. Uh, Tezos is flat. Uh, BNB USDT, we did take the short here, taking profits here. Again, that trade could still be considered active and open. Uh, let's see here. AXS flat. XRP USDT again, just the long right here that was taken. Let's see here. Polka dot flat. Chain link, we are flat. Last trade was a successful long right here. Litecoin, we're flat. Last successful trade was right here. Dogecoin. Uh, flat on Dogecoin. Dogecoin had a nice pump this morning. Uh, and it did catch, you can see the strategy did catch this part of that trade right there. And now we are breaking back down below that. That would have been a nice short, I'll tell you that. All right, Matic USDT uh, is, this is a, this was a great short, look at that. So there's, this is, this is one of the examples, like when, um, when you get these good trends, right? If you use the 50-50 or if you don't use the profit target and you just let the strategy exit you, uh, you're not going to be as successful nearly as often. So for example, the way that I have these tuned is I like to get 65 to 70% percent profitable, uh, which means that 65 to 70% of the time, the trade will win, right? Uh, however, that is not always the best way to make money if you're going to be taking every single trade from any particular strategy. Um, usually, for, especially for trending strategies, if you lower your hit rate significantly, um, but allow the strategy to really let the market go, let your winners run, 
you will have these big outsized winners, but you'll have lots of lots and small losers. Um, so keep that in mind when you guys are building, uh, building your own strategy. Uh, so we can see here that this Matic USDT short entered here, did take the profits here relatively quickly for the sake of the high accuracy. Uh, but you can see that that trade is still active. So even if you were using 50-50, you'd still be looking for quite a bankroll on this Matic short. All right, EOS USDT is flat. We did have a successful long trade that could be considered active. Uniswap, uh, again, very similar to XRP, took this long here and currently in drawdown on the long. Uh, Sushi is flat. Last successful trade was this long right here. Let's see here. Avalanche, flat. We did have the previous trade was a successful long trade right here to there. Uh, Phantom, let's see here. Uh, flat on Phantom, last successful trade was here to here. Ave, uh, we are flat on Ave. Last trade was the successful long right here. Bitcoin Cash, again, in a long, very similar to Polkadot and XRP. Uh, Algorand, we are actively short. Trade here, first TP here. This trade could still be considered active. Uh, Ethereum Classic, again, very similar to Polkadot and XRP here. Took this long. Let's see here. Filecoin took the long. Compound took the long. Uh, NEM Protocol took the long as well. Uh, TRX took the short. That trade could still be considered active. We've already hit TP1. Uh, Theta, not an active trade on Theta. Uh, Stellar Lumens in a, in a current long position. ICP, we are flat on ICP. Bit, no trade. Sand, no trade. Last successful trade was right here. Uh, Gala USDT, a uh, flat. We do have this long that was put on right here. And Mana, we're flat on Decentraland. Shiba Inu took the long as well with Polkadot and the rest. Loopering, flat. Last trade was a short. It was entered here and closed here. Engine Coin, we're flat. Alice, we are flat. Cosmos, we are flat. Willy Woo Chain, flat. IOTX, flat. Omisago took the long as well. Uh, Luna, flat. Last trade was the short trade right here. Chili's Marketplace had a successful long trade. Chili's had a lot of volatility here, entered here, entered here. That trade could still be considered active. Uh, Didex flat. Curve Finance, we are flat. Adara Hashgraph flat. And Seller finally flat. So that's all the Bybit markets uh, and looking for those particular trades. Let me know what you guys are into and what you're looking for. We're going to go over and look at the uh, five minute time frames and look for scalp trades here in just a little bit. Uh, but before we do that, Let's get into the chat and take a look at some of your comments. Ron Legato, wave and a smiley face to you, sir. Uh, Max Welch is going premium today. Awesome, man. Glad to have you join us. Let us know if you need any help. Uh, Valk Mike, shout outs to you, my friend. Gravy, Grits and Green. Xavier, hello. Crypto Bull. Uh, GBU Professor Wally, what's up, foo? Uh, let's see here. Crypto Bull. FTX supposed to have Super Bowl commercial too. Yeah, I heard that. I think they paid like $21 million for it. Um, crypto, Jenny, uh, Max Welch, Justin, do I think that Ethereum will dump as soon as the 2.0 upgrade goes forward and the staked Ethereum is unlocked? Uh, unlikely. I think that most of the, you know, like, I think that the dumping will have little, little to do with that, honestly. Um, the reason why is I think that a lot of those individuals who have staked their Ethereum, uh, yeah, onto the beacon chain are in Ethereum for the long haul. So I don't think that there's going to be this sudden mass exodus of uh, price once once price collapses. Um, honestly, uh, it, it kind of depends on what the overall market is doing. Like, so in, to, to add credence to that, like if the market is dumping fantastically um, it, again. So, OK, let's let, let's let's just. If the market is. Uh, selling off on average. And all of this staked Ethereum becomes unlocked. Some of it might be panic sold. Yes, absolutely. However, I really do feel that much more likely is that that has, is going to have little to little to no influence on actual price. Uh, most of the uh, individuals who have, who are early stakers on F 2.0, um, are F heads and they're not going anywhere. You know, uh, F not going anywhere. Uh, what's a good price to buy AVAX? Hmm. 
Uh, well, our first key level of support is going to be coming up around $55. Following that, again, is going to be kind of a return to the baseline area, which is going to be the upper range of this previous, uh, excuse me, distribution area. Um, so again, those would be my two initial targets, so the $55 range and then targeting a little bit lower at the $30 range. Mr. Ether, nice call on Hex yesterday. I already have some locked up, so I'm waiting for seven cents though. We're looking for lower. Uh, hard to put it. <laughs> I can't read that comment on the air. Uh, Max Welch says, what time UK time do signals come out on the CC Premium Discord? Uh, so our automated signals are always are, are going to come out at, at different times. So we've got these, we've got um, multiple strategies running on multiple time frames. So, uh, you know, the goal here, what we have right now, I'd say, uh, since we just set the new strategies up yesterday, I'm assuming that we're going to get an average of three to anywhere from three to eight signals per day. Um, and that's probably going to increase quite a bit as we continue to add strategies in here. Uh, the bottom feeder is relatively active. Uh, so we get multiple signals per week from the bottom feeder algo um, with me kind of focusing on meso and micro timeframes as well. Uh, there'll be a lot. So signals are going to be coming in at all times of the day across different time zones. Uh, when do I post signals? I typically post my signals at uh, right around the daily close. Uh, so that's going to be the daily close is the same time everywhere. It's 0000 UTC or more specifically, <laughs> more specifically 235959, right? Um, let's see here. Crypto Jenny, you guys are, you guys are silly. Uh, Crypto Bull says it's easy for me to push the green button, the red one not so much. Everyone's a little different, man. Alex, one, two, three, three. Yeah, I am going to be doing the show solo uh, moving forward. Uh, I look forward to, however, Alex is going to be coming on and doing a show with me. Uh, either this week or next week. So I'm really looking forward to that, actually. Uh, let's see. Ofano shorted, Dorge at, shorted, shorted uh, Doge at 215 and TP at 19. Now at break even. Nice, man. Very nice. Uh, Mr. T says, what trading bot is this, bud? Uh, so really, so excuse me. So all I'm doing here is uh, the strategies that I write, uh, I write in Pine. Um, and I implement them using TradingView Strategy Tester. And then those signals are broadcast to our trading bot uh, and then also to our signal sheet tracking system. So uh, the signals go A to bot. Uh, however, uh, one can use three commas or crypto hopper or whatever auto view, whatever they like uh, with our premium indicator suite to get the signals. Um, you know, that all just has to be encoded into their alert. And then the syntax has to be whatever trading bot platform you're using that accepts webhooks, but TradingView does webhooks. So if you just set an alert for any of our strategies or any of our, our indicators, you can have your bot or whatever system or platform you're using trade those. Um, uh, and then we also simultaneously have, uh, you know, our own forward testing and back testing, well, forward testing system, because all the live signals that are generated are put into a Google sheet uh, and then they're broadcast to Discord as well. So our members can act on those manually as well. Hawa. Uh, David Solis says, I currently has 41,000 in your portfolio. Should I transfer everything to a stable coin and wait for Bitcoin to drop to actually purchase one Bitcoin? What I recommend. So here's the, here's, here's the issue with that. Um, again, I'll restate this. Most people that sell after the market dips significantly never actually buy back in at the low. They never actually do, right? For whatever reason, they get more scared. Uh, their plan doesn't happen exactly the way that they want it. Just the particular chart pattern or indicator signal that they're looking for doesn't happen. And then they end up almost inevitably buying back in at the highs. So, um, the, you know, you use the word portfolio and this is my philosophy on this, right? If you're a trader, um, then we talk about equity. If you're an investor, we talk about a portfolio. So for me as an investor in cryptocurrency, my portfolio is for the long term. So when dips occur, I dollar cost average into the coins that I like. Um, I take advantage of dips. I like blood in the sea. Um, so whether Bitcoin dips 40% or 80%, I'm a buyer. 
uh, because I believe long term in the price, I believe long term in the project, and I know that I'm young enough to see the fruits of my labor now uh, pay off um, very well uh, throughout my life, throughout my life, not just toward the end of my life, like maybe next year, five years from now, 10 years from now, when I'll still be young. Um, it, again, it's just really not a good idea uh, to sell something that you've spent time building um, because of because of volatility, right? At Nobody knows how low the market's going to go. Nobody knows exactly where the market's going to turn around. Uh, there are things, again, that we point out all the time, strategies, things that people can watch for, uh, but I'm certainly not going to be the one held, you know, nobody is going to be there helping you make that decision if if you make that sell and then price goes back up. So in my experience, and this has happened to me, I'm, like you're not, there's nothing, there's, there's nothing bad about your question. I mean, I've done it. I've panic sold so many times throughout my career. I've made bad trading decisions so many times throughout my career. Um, but just the, the, it's, it's a simple lesson that I've learned. Uh, the things that I've bought for the long term stay in my portfolio for the long term. Doesn't really matter what price is doing. Um, You don't want to be scrambling to make a plan when the market's already moving against you. Patience pays off. Hey, Swing Trade Pro, Cisco Kid, Mr. Kobayashi, V shape recovery within 24 hours. No, sir, you said that last time. You said V shape recovery in two hours. And what happened? The market tanked. All right. The only V shape recovery we're going to see is this style, right? It's going to be up this way. Uh, Mr. T says, could I send your signals to my trading view? Yeah. So, uh, premium members get access to all our indicators and strategies, and then you can use trading view to send out web hooks again, like I said, to anything that you're interested in. Beckham 08 and Alex 123 prize for bring Jack back. You know, listen, I, I have great appreciation and love, uh, for everybody that, that kept things rolling while I was on my sabbatical. Um, and there's, you know, honestly, there's really nothing that I would enjoy more than to have those individuals on the show. So anytime they want to come on, uh, anytime they, they want to, um, uh, they want to present or, or host or trade or talk. Um, I would absolutely love that. Kevin M, good to have you back, my friend. Is there anything worth longing in this market? Uh, you know, again, uh, the the projects that you feel strongly about long term, it's not a bad idea to to begin DCAing at this price level. We've already had a lot of pain in the market. Uh, we're pretty close to, to to the weekly baseline on BTC. Alt still have quite a bit of ways to fall, but again, they might not. Uh, we might see we might see a recovery here. Um, I'm not I'm not trading on it, but uh, those are all things that that, that are going to matter in your personal strategy. Ask, ask about my, what does membership cost? You can find all the information about our subscriptions at uh, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. We've got three tiers of membership, just depending on what suits your budget and what suits your needs. Whether you're looking for uh, education, whether you're looking for signals, whether you're looking for um, just the community, whether you're looking for the indicators, uh, the packages are based, whether you're looking for personal mentoring or group mentoring, all the packages are based around different needs and different budgets. Hey, right on rice. It's not that much, Alex. Uh, let's see here. Mail, nail post house hex looking for this week. You know, again, hex is up 33%, uh, off of yesterday. We just talked about hex yesterday too, as well. Uh, let's actually go, go take an update on hex USDT on, on, on the Uniswamps. Yeah. So this is, this is the weekly chart for, uh, this is the weekly chart for hex. Uh, hex came back down again to this previous level of resistance where the market stopped and it pushed up from there, right? So honestly, if Hex can hold on to the 15 cent mark, we're back up at 20 cents. Uh, we can continue to see some upswing. We've already broken. Uh, eh, no, we haven't. Okay. I don't really like that anyways. You guys know I hate trend lines. They, they, they almost never work. Um, let's go down to the daily. The daily tells a little bit different picture though. So, all right. So interesting. So we can see here weekly looks like we are, we are bouncing, of course, off that, off that level of support. Uh, but we do have a barrier here in the way of the daily baseline right here. We're coming right up to it right now. Uh, so 
typically again this is always the thing the daily we trade the daily trend we look at the weekly for for typically long-term investments uh but we trade the daily time frame um so the daily time frame we make some bullish divergence here yeah we, we made a little bit of bullish divergence here uh, and so always when we take reversal trades below the baseline, we always target the baseline. And then we wait to see uh, price establish itself over the baseline to enter into the trending long. I don't like trading the bottom recoveries. Uh, they're just, they're too fraught with peril. Um, so I would be a seller on HEX here on the daily time frame and wait to see if we can actually form price action uh, with trending signals here above the daily baseline. Uh, and then we'll go. X has been fun. X has been fun. I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I didn't get in on it early. I've traded it a few times and I don't know. Everybody like, loves this stuff. So. Uh, do you think it's too late to build a position in Moon River for this cycle? Um, maybe. Well, listen, it just it just depends. I don't have I do not have the magical information on whether the cycle will continue or not. Right. Um, it, it it absolutely possibly could. Uh, you know, December is typically the 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 month to sell your crypto. Um, and at the last in the last bull market, we saw some interesting things. We saw Bitcoin dump and then we saw Ethereum dump and then we saw altcoins dump. But then we saw so let me hold on let me start that again bitcoin pumped then ethereum pumped and then altcoins pumped and then bitcoin crashed and then went sideways and then we had alt season right so ethereum and altcoins just pumped to massive new all-time highs um and those are we call those exit pumps so that happens at the end of a bullish cycle so that could absolutely happen again especially if bitcoin drops a little bit more here or just continues to go sideways here we can absolutely see the altcoins perform uh but I'll tell you what, like looking at the development cycle for Moon River and what's going to accomplish, it's it's not too late to build a position for the long term. Rod and Rice has a few dreams he'll sell. Don't don't we all, man? No one wants your choice. Crypto Bull says he's learned as soon as you panic sell, the market will change. When you're about to panic sell, it is usually the time to buy. Yeah, it's that's true. Moonshine Fuel giving some more advice here, saying to hold at this point and look at buying in in increments. That's again, that's one of the best strategies. Uh, B flow. The only V shape recovery is putting up the deuces. Uh, glad you're back, Cybernetics. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Saintsy. Uh, what's my opinion on Neo? I've liked Neo for a long time. Like in in between the the ups and downs. It's the Chinese Ethereum. Crypto Caveman, David Rice. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Ask got in on Hex at zero point zero zero eight. Good man. Mr. T says, people just need to realize this run is unlike any previous runs. I mean, every, listen, every, every single cycle is different, right? Every single cycle has its own nuances, its own differences. And, you know, one kind of interesting thing is, you know, we used to talk about um, like the life cycle of crypto. And there's been some reports on this, actually, because this used to be true back in the day, but it's really not true anymore. And I think there's some reasons to that. So it used to be, like I just said, like Bitcoin would pump and then Ethereum pumps and then altcoins pump, right? Um, or large caps pump and then that's that that they get sold off and then mid caps pump and then that gets sold off and then shit coins pump small cap coins and that's not really the case anymore uh we are seeing even though the market is still highly tethered to the volatility of bitcoin in general with altcoins uh, we are seeing more diversification we are seeing cycles inside cycles and sectors you know open up their own cycles and the market just to move more fluidly this is the same thing that happened in the stock market 100 years ago um, and it's just going to continue to happen here in cryptocurrency where, I mean, especially if we see something crazy happen, like Bitcoin get flipped or the market get pegged to something that's not Bitcoin. It's, 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 it's interesting. And if you continue to hold, you'll watch it capsize 50% to <laughs> You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, huh, B-Flow? Yeah, I feel you, man. Okay. Um, so let's get over into uh, the lower time frames, and we'll see if we can't find any scalp trades for today. Again, here on the Bybit, we're going to be using uh, the double VWAP bounce strategy. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit. We are adding a secondary layer here, so we are going to be looking for divergence to look for alternative entries and also confirm our trade entries as well. Now, again, this is the strategy that I've been trading on the lower time frames when I'm sitting at my desk. I've actually got my trading terminal up here right now. Uh, the last trade that I took with this strategy was, uh, and you know, this is, this is, this is a little bit different, right? Uh, but the last, the last trade that I took with this strategy was this XRP USDT short right here. Uh, still in this position, I have taken 50% off, uh, just right before the show and moved my stop loss to break even. So, um, 
But again, essentially, I'll just point out what I saw here. Uh, let's get rid of this and we'll just kind of zoom in. This was my entry candle and I actually entered when this was green. I entered pretty close to the top here. Um, and again, this is not the setup. This is not the perfect setup per the strategy, but I saw something interesting. Um, and what I saw was this falling volume. What I saw was this falling volume uh, as price was testing resistance, which was established over here. Uh, but again, then we have this this outsized breakout looking candle on extremely low volume. This this was extremely low on the way to the upside. Um, and I just knew that was this, this is the VWAP strategy as a reversal strategy for intraday trading. And uh, that was that was just the time we came down, uh, tested the the VWAP. I took that's when I took 50% uh, of my profit, moved my stop loss to break even. I uh, didn't actually hit it on this swing up and still in this trade. So we'll see. All right. So getting rid of uh, one of the trend lines. Are interesting. Oh, yes, it's an overlay. Uh, anyway, so for the, those of you guys who don't remember or aren't familiar with the strategy, uh, what we are looking for is for longs, uh, we are looking for price. Uh, we, we, can, we do not trade within the four hour window of the VWAP reset, uh, but once we're outside of that window or if we're before that window, uh, we're looking for price to touch. Uh, so it's low is equal to or less than the lower VWAP band. And then we wait for a green Heikinashi candle to close above the lower band. Uh, and that's when we enter our trade. Uh, we target, we put our stop at the swing low and we target one to one risk reward ratio. Another way to trade this is to target one to one risk reward ratio with 50% of your position. Once that hits, move your stop loss to break even, target two to one with the second half of your position. Uh, for shorts, exactly the opposite. Uh, we are looking for the high to equal or exceed the upper VWAP line. And then once that's occurred, we're waiting for the first red Heikinashi candle to close back down within, uh, back underneath the lower band. We target one to one risk reward ratio. Uh, and again, with the, with the caveats that we talked about, so we can just see here, uh, here is the, uh, here's the first trade that would have been a winner. Uh, this particular candle right here would have netted not only one to one, but two to one. Uh, we can see that this trade right here would have been a loser. Uh, this entry candle right here would have been a great winner. So this would have been the entry stop loss up here. And we would have targeted one to one. And we had a really beautiful trade there. Um, and no other trades so far coming in off that just, you know, again, you can use VWAP to trade a little more discretionarily, but you're just going to have a much higher failure rate. So if you just wait for the perfect trades to come to you, you're going to, you're going to have more success almost on average. All right. So let's just be looking, let's just look at the USDT markets. Um, BTC USDT is actually potentially going to be giving us, uh, uh, one of these trades here in a little bit. We just need price to get down and get down to about 46,390, uh, before we can look for this trade. And again, we're also looking for bullish divergence. Uh, in the case of uh, our longs and bearish divergence in the case of the shorts. Uh, Ethereum USDT, uh, let's see here. Oh, we did have that low. This is going to be, uh, we need a green Heikinashi candle to close, uh, but we do not have, uh, we do not have bearish divergence. And in fact, we have bearish confirmation. So uh, larger here. So again, not going to be the trade that we're looking for. Uh, on Bitcoin, we actually do have just a little bit of weak bullish divergence, so we might actually get that trade. We'll wait and see what happens when price actually touches that lower band, and there's no guarantee that it will. Um, now, we could uh, potentially take this up to the v, uh, to the session volume uh, point of control or up to the VWAP line. Uh, does look, you know, so one thing that I do like to see here is this large volume on this dump. That's another uh, intraday strategy as well. Doesn't have to be intraday, but it works best on intraday, which is where you simply scalp the opposite direction after seeing a large red candle with high volume um, in a downtrend. Now, typically, uh, one other thing you can do to enhance this is not to buy the first dip because there's usually a second dip as well on a little bit lower volume. Uh, and sometimes you're just going to get trapped uh, in a downtrend, right? Where that's not the trade. That's why you set the stop loss where you should set it and you take your losses when you get a losing trade and you move on with your life. Uh, you don't just hold on to a losing position, especially if you're trading with leverage. Uh, Solana USDT again, no trade here. We do need to get down to about 159.05 on Solana. We've had some great trades here though. So trade right here, entry, stop loss up here, it moved against us, but then we got what we wanted. And let's see here. Let's see here. This trade, do we have a red? We did have a red Heikinashi here. That trade was a loser. And then we have another entry candle right here. And that would have been a really good winner. So let's see here. Cardano. Again, price didn't really get quite low enough for us. So no trades there. Tezos, same thing. Just didn't really get quite low enough here. Uh, BNB is actually one to watch here. Uh, so we are, we have been trading at the lower band of the VWAP. Um, let's see here. We don't really have divergence though. We have bearish confirmation. Uh, let's see what happens when we get the, uh, 
uh, the green Heikenashi close. We don't have that yet. Just so you guys understand this, the, the black candles are red Heikenashi candles and the white candles are green Heikenashi candles. Even though I'm looking at traditional Japanese candlesticks, uh, that's the code that I have running in the background. This is my custom version of UAB. Uh, working on turning this into an automated strategy. Uh, AXS, again, we really needed to get down here to about 91.845. Uh, XRP, USD, we already talked about that. Uh, Polkadot uh, is going to be a good signal, uh, but we need price to rally back up to 25.33. Uh, Link USDT, again, looking for a signal coming up here. Just need price to get back above 17.59. Uh, Litecoin as well, we needed to get down here to about 142.94. Dogecoin needs to fall a little bit down to 17 cents, 17.04 more specifically, excuse me. Uh, Matic a little too high as well, we need it down here to $1.76. Uh, EOS USDT again, just a little too high. Uniswap uh, did come down and retest the point of control uh, and the VWAP. So let's actually, I, I would be expecting a little bit of an upswing here, but again, we've got lower highs and lower lows coming in. So uh, we do need to see this trend break. So that's what we're currently looking at here for Uniswap. Got this descending channel. Uh, let's see if we can break out of it or just trade within it. So interesting pattern on Uniswap. Sushi, again, looking like we're gonna get a decent signal here. We do need price to rally up here to about $5.45. Uh, Avalanche, again, broke through the point of control support that was formed here. And the and uh, and the VWAP, so we're currently below VWAP, but we need to get down here to seventy seven dollars. Uh, FTM didn't quite reach the uh, the VWAP line, so this might actually be a good example of that. Don't trade the first bounce. Uh, we can see here downtrend, large uh, large volume candle, uh, red reversal candle, um, and price has not just rallied above it. So I would actually be expecting a secondary dip here. Ave. Again, needs to get a little lower down to the 160.20 area. Uh, BCH trading below the point of control and the VWAP. Uh, but again, needs to get down here to about 417.90. Uh, Algo, actually, we've got a nice signal coming in from Algo on this five-minute candle. Just a second. That's what I'm looking for. All right, so... Now we don't have, uh, we do not have uh, the bearish divergence here, or excuse me, the bullish divergence here. So I'm only going to be using half a position size. So half a Bitcoin on the trade instead of a full one in USDT terms. That's what I have in the day trading account is one BTC. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to be targeting one to one risk to reward ratio here. You guys can see that. And that a little bit, that's a little bit more than one to one. There we go. That's perfect. And then we've got two minutes and 20 seconds for the close of this candle. So I'm over here on three commas. I'm just going to get everything set up here. Profit. We're going to be targeting Stop loss at 131.40. All right, cool.
Okay, let's go up to... Beeflo took shorts on Didex, Filecoin, and YGG, Yggdrasil. That's the coin of the Vikings. The Viking coin. Um, <laughs> uh, good move, question mark? Uh, let's go look over at the Didex. You know, Didex is an interesting one. Uh, again, we can kind of see this. Let's go down to the to the to the five minute here. Uh, you know, really wiki around this level of support. Like what, what it just depends on what time frame we're talking about. Um, I really wouldn't be looking for intraday entries here. Um, it does kind of seem like we're going to get a little push up intraday, maybe over the next day or so. Uh, on the daily time frame, uh, I think we're good. We're seeing a lot of breakdown behavior. Crypto Rick asks, where do I see everything in the next five years? Bitcoin stocks, aside from infinite money printing, I think there seems more reason to be bearish and bullish. Do I agree? Um, no, I'm a bull, man. Uh, I think that things are going to get continue to get better and better and better and better. And I think that uh, with all of the, the money coming into the cryptocurrency industry, we're actually going to start seeing some of the disruption that we've been wanting to see this whole time. I think that projects are going to get better. I think there's going to be more accountability. I think that regulation is going to be done correctly. Um, I think that the markets are continue to going to continue to push up. I think we're going to continue to create value, and I think the world's going to become a better place. And and we all live in a better place. You know, I'm just a positive person, I, and and that uh, that positive investment mentality has served me well. Um, you know, market crashes are aberrations, and and I don't think that the world's going to come to a screaming, crashing, grinding halt. I'm very positive for the way that humanity is going to evolve and tackle new challenges. I'm very positive about the ways that. Technology is going to be used to solve real world problems. I'm positive about the role of cryptocurrency and bringing government's incentives more in line with humanity's incentives. And yeah. So in five years, I see, uh, let's just not talk about price, but in five years, I see crypto being used far more mainstream. Uh, you know, probably a lot of these bubbles will have popped by then. Um, we've probably been through a market cycle or two at that point in time. Uh, we're going to be, you know, probably using just far more cryptocurrency in our daily lives. Um, maybe not as a medium of exchange, but certainly in the realm of like NFTs um, and tokens. Yeah. Shao to me. Marvin Skidmore. What's going on, my friend? Uh, he says, evening all. Got his pants pulled down. Do not set your stop too close. Tear. Hanging on to that long proved to be a bad idea. Just going to DCA back in and wait for the new year. Yes, we'll just wait for that new year's pump, my friend. That's what we're going to do. Uh, Moonshine Fuel says, interesting how the market went the opposite way of the herd. 20,000 Ethereum canceled <laughs> for now, I guess. Market was fire for a bit there. Yeah, I mean the, the the market got relatively frothy there. All right, come on, Algorand, let's go. Um, the market got pretty frothy there, um, and you know that's it's it's just has there been enough pain? We'll wait and see, I guess. I mean, if you really look at DeFi and like Web three to Ethereum, it's way worse than the USDT charts would 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 convey. I mean, most DeFi is down like seventy percent against Ethereum. Kevin M says, uh, are we officially in a bear market or are we on a pullback within a bull market? We're not in a bear market yet. We're in a massive pullback currently and potentially at an area of trend shifting, but we're not in a bear market yet. Not until the weekly trend, not until the weekly chart shift. Thank you, Crypto Rick. I appreciate that, man. I'm glad to be back. Moonshine Fuel says, the current area of the market we're in is... <laughs> Do you think we will have a better Bitcoin? Yeah, I really do. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, I don't want to call it FUD because I really hate using that word, but there's a lot of FUD out there um, with regards to like the core development, right? And like being really negative against Taproot, for example, which is like one of the biggest upgrades like ever. 
Um, and you know, just all this hate against Segwit and Lightning and the Lightning Network and all that stuff. And the Lightning Network is a, is is a great innovation, right? Uh, the Lightning Network is the way we get uh, you know um, the security of Bitcoin um, with um, you know with a peer to peer cash system. It's it's, it's the only way um, I know how. So, all right, going good, guys. Up one hundred and sixty four dollars currently on this trade. And watch me lose it all. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm a huge believer in Bitcoin. Uh, I don't think that it's going to become irrelevant. I think that it is going to be the gold standard. I think that it's going to, I think that we're going to figure out everything we need to figure out. I think all the naysayers are going to be relatively proven wrong. And yeah, that's, that's what I think. Lightning is the shit. Uh, who are my favorite crypto personalities? Um, I really like uh, Adam Meister, uh, the Bitcoin Meister. I've been following him for years. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I used to like, uh, uh, you know, I still do, I guess, to some extent, right? Tone Vase is cool and everything. Crown's obviously a, like a really cool personality, but, um, you know, I tend to, I tend to pay attention to, um, like I'm in a lot of IRC channels. Um, if you listen, if you guys want good information, you got to get off Reddit and you got to go to IRC, right? That's where the, uh, that's where the, that's where like the real nerds are hanging out and talking and you don't get none of the like shilling crap that you get on Twitter and, and Reddit. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a nerd, man. So I like to pay attention to the, you know, like to the development, uh, IRCs and, you know, the, um, um, just, you know, any channel where individuals are talking about actually code and, and, and work and development. And, you know, I tend to find that that's, that's just where I find my niche. That's where I tend to, to, to get my information and, and my ideas about where things are going. Um, honestly, Twitter is a great, as much as, as much as it can be caustic, like crypto Twitter is just a fantastic source of information. Honestly, um, there's just so much on there all the time. And if you can just really filter your, um, you know, your mindsets down, there's a lot of really cool traders on there too, you know, like cause and, um, uh, zero factor and, and, um, uh, and all those guys, they're, 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 they're cool and they're good. Um, as far as, uh, as, as far as like, I guess that's, that's kind of it. You know, I kind of stick to myself. I don't watch too many videos, you know, like some obviously like guilty pleasures or, uh, Bella, you know, does really good journalism. Um, uh, barely sociable is pretty cool to watch, but I think he's way off on his crypto stuff. Um, uh, but honestly, like, uh, like recently, like stuff that I listen to is uh, like Patrick Boyle, like absolutely love Patrick Boyle. Like he's got a great YouTube channel. It's very undervalued. You guys should go check that out. Uh, uh, Herno said, go where instead. So IRC stands for internet relay chat. Uh, I just hit my profit target for this Algorand, uh, long guys. So I made $270 USDT, uh, trades closed. Um, not a bad way to spend uh, 10 minutes of my life. Uh, let's see here. Um, I could have made a whole lot more if I would have done the, the uh, two to one. But again, uh, we didn't have the bullish divergence there. So I want to point this out. It's cool to point out. I just had a winning trade. Um, so uh, we didn't have the bullish divergence there. Um, and so I only took half risk on the trade. If I'd have taken full risk on the trade, I could have made 500 right there, a little bit more, $540. Um, but uh, I'm happy with the trade. You always need to be happy with your trade and the strategy because I can repeat that over and over again um, and just get consistent results. If I start changing things, then I'm going to get inconsistent results and I'll have no way to troubleshoot what went wrong with my trading when I start losing money. Crypto Bull 21, what's up, boy? <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, uh, internet relay chat is the the old school messaging client. You got to, you know, it's it's not it's not like, well, I mean, there's MIRC, right, which is pretty plug and play, but like you got to kind of know like how to set your channels and how to utilize it, and it's um, it's not intuitively user friendly. I'll say that, but honestly, if, if you want to find out where the nerds are chatting, who or who are not shilling stuff, like that's where it's at. And there's a lot of really really good information about fundamental stuff there. Um, if you get into the right, you know, and listen, it's not like discord is terrible. Like we run a discord channel and it's not like telegram's terrible. There's just, um, you gotta be really careful about like what channels you join. And there is a opportunity cost. It's not really opportunity cost. I need to come up with a word for this. Like, what is it? It's like information cost, right? Like if you sit there and digest a bunch of garbage information or just too much information, then it's very hard for you to discern what information was valuable and which was not right. So if you're really, 
just if you're really diligent when you set out to start studying things, just be really careful about what you listen to and where you put your time and energy into because you can't get that time and energy back. Um, uh, you know, listen, um, I want to be free to change my mind on things. Otherwise, I don't have the freedom to be a human. Um, and I've always been extremely critical of Craig Wright. Um, I will say that it is that it, it appears to be all that here's the thing right um the more i the, the more stuff i hear about this right like i listened to the trial and um it seemed like his knowledge of bitcoin was quite impressive and obviously he's involved with n-chain and doing a whole lot of stuff um the dude just has not in my opinion conclusively proved that he is satoshi nakamoto i think that he i and i think that it is just as simple as moving the coins um I, I find the BSV community relatively toxic. Um, I'm open to having my mind changed, but, but I consider them relatively toxic based on what I've seen, just like the Bcash community. Um, and overall, I think the market has decided, right? Like these people kind of run around and talk shit, but the market seems to have decided that the Bitcoin is the better protocol. And, um, yeah, so, uh, not, not, not a big fan. Uh, I certainly listen, I've, li I've listened, I've watched a lot of like Craig Wright shows and I just don't find them like. I get a bad feeling like walking away from them, right? I don't feel inspired after listening to him. You know, I like watching, like, um, let me try to think here. Like even Andre Jeek, you at least you walk away feeling like um, inspired, you know what I mean? So, all right, guys, so that was our market breakdown for the day. We didn't finish going through the lower time frames, but uh, it is the top of the hour, and my child is home from school for the next two weeks. Thank you so much, pandemic. So that's how we're going to do things. So over here into the main scene. Thank you guys so much for joining me for another episode of the Cracking Cryptocurrency Market Update. As always, I'm Justin Wise. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Make sure to guys hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It lets me know that I'm making good content and you enjoy what I'm doing. Keeps me coming back. Um, and if you guys are interested in upgrading your trading skills or joining our community, make sure to check out everything that we offer as a company at premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com, including uh, our automated trading signals, uh, our premium indicator suite, our educational material, including the Pathways to Profit course, um, and, uh, our community mentoring as well as the premium discord community. So, uh, that and much more, check out everything that we have. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, hot, sarcastic remarks, hot stock tips, or death threats, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below or bring it into the general chat on discord where we can keep the conversation going after the show. Thank you guys for everything. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.